So Hondata started shipping Flash Pros today for the R18. So I thought I'd take a moment and go over the R18 version of Flash Pro Manager. Um, the awesome thing about Flash Pro Manager is it's, everything is integrated. So they have one version of the software that works across all the platforms that Flash Pro supports. All you have to do to get into the R18 side of things is to click New Calibration and choose from the drop down of the vehicle you want. Uh, I'm going to choose the 2007-2008 R18. Um, I'm going to open up the stock equivalent tuned version of the map here. So now I've got that loaded. Um, so basically you've got all these different areas across here, Flash Pro, Calibration, Tables, Sensors, Display, Graph, and Error Codes. Um, if you have a Flash Pro connected, you can click Flash Pro and you'll see information about your Flash Pro, the calibrations, any data logs you've taken, and your in owner information and the history of all the Flash Pros that have been connected to your computer. Um, what's important here is in the calibration section, this is where most of the kind of like the basic features of Flash Pro for how it controls your car. Uh, you, this is where you're going to be setting things up. So in here in the calibration section you can put some notes in, make revision number changes. If you click on fuel, here we have the settings for the injector size and fuel pressure, fuel trim, and the opening time or as I call it the latency of the injectors. Um, for basic users you're never going to touch anything on this screen. Um, so here we've got Watt Lambda Adjustment. This is going to be somewhat how you're going to tune your fuel as long once you have your airflow meter calibration set up and I'll get into that a little bit later. So you've got one for the low cam and the high cam. Um, I'm going to defer to uh, Doug over at Hondata on some of the basics on how to approach this at first but since I don't have any personal experience tuning the R18 yet. I will soon though, I'm sure. Um, cranking fuel probably won't be touched by most people. Oh and FYI, I do have the show advanced parameters thing here turned on. That won't be on by default so you won't see all this stuff unless you check this box. So just check that so you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, we got cylinder trim. You can add fuel per cylinder or take fuel away. Um, you got air temperature compensation and coolant temperature compensation. Those affect low, high flow, and cranking uh, situations. So if you find that you're having certain issues in with with getting the car to start, you could tweak the cranking tables here. That seems to help a lot on the SI. Um, for ignition, we've got low and high cam. You can see the tables changing below here. And cylinder trims again, air temp, and coolant temp compensations. Uh, what's really cool about the R18 release is a lot of this stuff wasn't here for the SI when the SI um, Flash Pro release came out. So the UR18 guys, you're getting a lot of cool features right off the bat. It's pretty awesome what Honda has done here for you guys. Uh, and here you can set the VTEC point, you know, where it's going to swap over to the economy cam. I don't know how useful it's going to be to be able to change that, but, you know, we'll see as people start tinkering, we'll find out what this engine is capable of. Um, here they've got the checkbox for the secondary intake runner. So, say if you've got an intake manifold that doesn't have that and it's been throwing a check engine light, here you go, you can disable that, that'll get rid of the check engine light. Um, if you do have the stock one, you can try to tune uh, where the crossover is for that. Um, we'll see what people come up with as, as uh, these cars get tuned. But I think that's going to be a big deal, being able to disable that, because I know a lot of people were complaining about that, and there it is. In closed loop here, we've got uh, settings for parameters for being able to tune where it switches over on for, for watt fueling. Um, you can change what the min and max short-term fuel trims are. And one thing that's probably going to be used by a lot of people is turning off this right here, the secondary oxygen sensor. If you've taken the cat off and you're using a uh, downpipe instead, um, you'll need to disable this to get rid of your check engine light.
So um, that should be helpful, I imagine. Um, you can also mess with this here. This controls this uh, laugh voltage to lambda. This controls how the ECU um, determines what AFR it's reading from the oxygen sensor. This is a really advanced thing, and I wouldn't suggest anyone touch this unless they really know what they're doing. Um, then we've got knock control. This controls how the ECU reacts to the readings from the knock sensor and how it retards timing in certain scenarios. Uh, under sensors here, we've got AFM flow. This is very important. This is going to be the key to you guys tuning your cars with Flash Pro for the fuel. You've got to make sure that when you change the intake, that the values in this make sense for your intake. And tuning it is beyond the spectrum of what I'm going to touch on here, but this table is very, very important for you to tune. Um, it's also a big deal for force induction because this table is almost impossible to tune properly with force induction unless you have a fuel return setup. Uh, the stock car does not have it, so you'll need to. I mean, I'm, most of the people that are running force induction now know this already, but you know, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be interested in in force induction now that Flash Pro is available, and I'm just going to say that right up front. Another cool thing that Honda added in this. Uh, new version of uh, Flash Pro Manager is support for the RDX map sensor. I'm curious to see if uh, Honda has done any tests on this and if it's more accurate or if it does other, if there's anything else uh, interesting about it besides them just expanding the support. They've always just had the stock sensor or Honda sensor. Um, I know that Honda sensor is cheaper than the RDX sensor from Honda, so. And I think it's still a better value, but I'm curious if there's any if they have any feedback on that or done any testing. So um, here, if you've changed the final drive of your car, you can also adjust the speed percentage to get that dialed in to become accurate. If you you know if it's not reading properly on your dash, um, under rev limits, you can set you know the rev limiter and where it recovers. So if you want it to uh, bounce a little faster, you can. And you can also set the the launch limiter, so this is, you know, launch control. I mean, it's a basic launch control. Hopefully, Honda will be exposing some more uh, logic behind that soon, so we can have a little more control over how that engages and when it disengages. Here, you can set your idle speed when the car first starts, and uh, you know, after it's warmed up. Um, throttle plate. This is an advanced feature I wouldn't touch unless you know what you're doing. Uh, I have, we have posted a bunch of these before in the past for the SI. I don't know if using those is a good idea on the R18. It'll be up to people to experiment and give feedback. Um, but be careful with this because if you mess it up you could, you know, turn your car into a Toyota and have unintended acceleration. Uh, wouldn't that be great? Um, here under miscellaneous um, you can disable cruise control. Not sure why you would unless you've removed it. Um, so a lot of the stuff here you don't turn off unless you know either your car doesn't support it, like the VSA being enabled or disabled. That's just there because they've put Flash Pro Manager out there to work with all the models at once without special software. So you can just check the box to to set it up. So um, you know. Some people will use this stuff for race cars, or maybe it'll there will be things here to support uh, other cars that they don't actually support yet, like you know, Asian Civics or Mexican Civics or Canadian Civics. You know, it's different models that don't have certain emissions equipment. There will be checkboxes in here to disable certain things, um, and Honda will clarify on that in the future as they add support for other cars, which I'm sure they will. They're not going to leave it just for the U.S. So, well, I'm, this is all I'm going to go over for now. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here to digest. You can click around on the, the different tables here. Um, I'm, there's, I know I've got some other videos I'm going to post on some other topics. I just wanted to go over the calibration section because there is so much to digest in there, that, stuff that you guys can do right off the bat to, you know, get your car running properly. Um, just go and look through the different calibrations that are available. There's so much to see in here. Honda has uh, offered a lot of stuff right off the bat. It's going to be great for you guys um, as you move forward. So, anyways, that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching.